Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is the Creality Falcon 10 watt laser engraver. In this video I'm going to be doing a little overview and review of this. Keep in mind this was provided to me by Creality but no other financial compensation was offered and they have no say whatsoever in the making of this video. This is the new 10 watt upgraded which has just a um, beefier laser module on it. So let's see what it looks like. Um, please feel free to use the chapters and we'll dive straight to the conclusion because that's what everyone wants to see. So let's get started. So whenever I watch product reviews like this, I always go straight to the conclusion at the end, watch the conclusion, then to go back to the chapter. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. Overall, this is a decent laser engraver. There are millions of these things out there. I think about once a week I get some company wanting me to review their little diode laser like this. And I only picked um, this Creality and agreed to this Creality because I've had good luck with the Creality 3D printers and they generally, you know, make a pretty decent product. This is relatively sturdy. It's got a good frame. It goes together really simple. It has a couple little nice things like you get some markings on it. It's just no frills, no hassle, very simple, and it has a decent 10 watt laser diode on it. Everything else is pretty basic. There's really no other features beyond that. As far as a 10 watt laser, that's about the highest power you can get right now, generally speaking, for one of these hobby machines, and they're coming in at under $500. This was 480 at the time of this filming. So it's kind of one of the cheapest ones on the market. It comes from Creality, it's well made, but Generally, you're going to just be using this with laser gerbil or um, light burn. So the software side is kind of offloaded. There's no controls on this. It's really just an XY gantry with a manual focus on the actual laser and then a 10 watt laser. That's pretty much it. So Creality knows how to make a belt drive with these little V rollers that move along these extrusions. They've kind of gotten that figured out and they know how to do that inexpensively and quite frankly well. So that's really what you're getting, an extruded aluminum frame with the gantry, the stepper motors, and a 10 watt laser on it, and a really mini controller that does just the basics. So for that, it's very good. So um, let's dive right into the other categories and I'll kind of go over some specs first and then we'll go to the others. So here is a closer look at the actual machine. I'll kind of go over the features and it's actually pretty quick because there really aren't that many features. Um, so you have a 400 by 415 work envelope, but of course you can just kind of lift this thing up and set it on top of whatever you're working on. Don't mind the wobble, that's just my workbench. It sits pretty flat. Um, so over here you have the controller, you have the power input right there. You've got a USB, which is only a USB-C, which was interesting because my shop actually doesn't have USB-C, so I have to use my laptop. And then you got a micro SD right below that. That's it. And then you have an on off switch and this single little button over here. You do have kind of a scale um, that goes along here. I don't know if you can see that with the shop lights, but there's kind of a scale engraved in on this and then another scale engraved on this. It's a little bit weird because right there is the zero and it doesn't actually start at zero. It starts at like 25, 25 millimeters. So it actually starts about an inch in. And same here is your scale starts at zero right at the edge of this rail, but you can't actually engrave on there. So the scale is kind of weird and strange. And of course you get the scale up here as well. So it's, it's a little bit weird, but you have a scale. Uh, let's see, you've got limit switches on the X and Y, and there you go. Those are your features. That That's literally pretty much it. Um, on the actual laser, you have this little magnetic um, removable dust shield kind of thing. And this is actually nice. The early lasers didn't have this and you would just get this big plume of smoke. This actually helps direct um, the air from the fan that cools the laser down in a little bit. And it kind of does help remove some of that dust and debris that gets around there. And it means that the laser isn't as exposed. You're basically focusing right below it. Um, so it you know kind of covers up the laser. One kind of nice little feature is it comes with um, this little focus guide, which is this nice um, machined aluminum piece or probably extruded aluminum piece. And it hangs right on the front. And then it has the writing on it for what you can do. So you basically just set that down loosen the head, move it up and down. It's very stiff. Move it up and down to focus. And as you can see, this thing is a little bit rough, but you just kind of 
rest it down on your workpiece, and then tighten it up, and that is the focusing. Once again, no frills. This is really, really simple. This isn't motorized. It is just literally this little tongue that sits on here that you just kind of slide this up and down on. So really, really, really simple. Um, a lot of these newer ones actually have like tilt detection because let's say you're you know engraving something and it starts to go like that. The laser beam could fire off and I don't know, kill a puppy or something. This doesn't have any kind of tilt detection. It also doesn't have a flame sensor. Some of them even have a flame sensor to where they can detect that. It does have a little bubble level. Look at that, it has a little bubble level right there. I don't really know why you would need that, but it has a bubble level so that you can make sure that this is sitting flat on a surface. That's all there is to it. Um, the belt tension is really old school. You just kind of have these um, T-nuts to sit in the channel. You just pull the belt back, tighten down the T-nuts, and that is your belt tensioning. So this is about as bare bones as it gets. But it works, you know, you're not really carrying much weight on this head, it can move freely. So that's really all you need. Um, like I said in the intro, Creality has ultimately figured out how to make a really, really simple and low cost XY gantry system from their 3D printers. And yeah, it works fine. So let's talk about cutting performance. They claim that this 10 watt laser can do 12 millimeters cutting in a single pass. This is 12 millimeters plywood. You cannot get 12 millimeter cut in a single pass. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this, but it's just not something that a machine like this is really well suited for. A CO2 laser, something bigger that is more geared towards cutting, is going to have an air assist that's actually going to be blowing out this debris that is created. If you don't really have something that's forcing this debris out of it, it just kind of collects in there and you can see that burn and that haze around there. And this was actually two passes. And you can see it almost made it through, but the laser just really doesn't have a good chance to penetrate all the way down in there without some sort of forced air and also some exhaust to get that smoke out of there. Um, so that is kind of the problem. And what I did is I showed you what this looks like from a cross section. This is full power at 70 millimeters per minute, which is about half um, of actually what they recommend in the manual for um, eight millimeter plywood. And you can see it gets most of the way through it. I measured this and it's about seven millimeters of the 12. You get down to about there, but it just can't penetrate. The other thing is if you look at the edges, they start to get really jagged up top. With a laser, you basically have two different parameters that you're looking at. You have the power of the laser and then the speed at what it travels. Both of those will ultimately determine how much energy or how much um, you know, power, optical burning power, you're putting into the workpiece. If you go really fast, you're not really dwelling on it long enough for it to actually penetrate through and do a clean cut. But if you go too slow, it will just burn it. And then we get something like this to where you're just charring and burning the outside and you're not really gonna get a good cut out of it. Yeah, it might get all the way through, but you're basically just burning it at that point and you're gonna have a horrible taper, you're gonna have a really nasty edge and it's gonna be just more charcoal than anything. So I think with a 10 watt laser, you can very reliably and cleanly cut six millimeters. This right here, is six millimeter and this was a cut that I did with it with the proper settings. That's six millimeter. That is a fantastic, very clean, nice cut. And you can do this all day long with the right settings. This is fine. Uh, once you start getting up into eight, 10 and 12 millimeters, you're gonna get, you see how big that cut is, the kerf is compared to like that. It is just a lot wider, a lot fuzzier, and your curve starts getting a lot bigger because it's just burning through that top layer. So I think six millimeters is really what I would feel comfortable saying that this can cut through. Once you start getting up eight, 10, 12, I just don't think it's possible. And you should really be looking at a CO2 laser. But let's take a look and see what this looks like when it's actually doing some nice cuts.
So you can use laser gerbil or you can use light burn or you can just save a G code file from either of those and load it directly onto the SD card and then just plug in the SD. It doesn't have a file system, it doesn't have a screen, there's no way to select the file. It will just choose, I think they say the most recent one. It might even go alphabetically, I'm not sure, but they just advise to having one G code file on there. So you put in the SD, hit the button, it homes, and then it kind of does this frame thing to where it kind of moves along the outside outer bounds of what this file is going to be. And this is just a file that came on the um, SD card. So I'm just kind of doing their little demo example. This is two millimeter basswood, which just looks like basic plywood to me. And this is a um, Eagle, which even though this is the Falcon, this is an Eagle file that they have included. And this is um, running real time. And it's just a nice simple little cut, but it kind of gives you an idea of the detail. So I'll just kind of let this run so you can watch it for a little bit. Keep in mind, I am using the honeycomb bed out of my CO2 laser underneath of this. For cutting, if you have it flat on a surface, you're gonna get a lot of um, flash up and flare up on the backside. And so the backside of the cut will be really, really ugly. So I highly recommend that you get some sort of honeycomb or somehow elevate this so the laser can actually penetrate all the way through. If you don't have the laser penetrating all the way through, the backside is just gonna be absolutely disgusting. So I have a honeycomb bed and then underneath of that, I just have a plate of aluminum and I, really wish they would start including these because you really do need something like that if you're gonna be doing cutting. For engraving, it's not a big deal. You can just engrave right on the surface, but for cutting, you kinda of need that backstop. And here is the finished product. Looks really nice, um, no issues whatsoever. And you can see when you have a honeycomb, you get a nice um, clean back. The little spots that you see is kind of where it passes over the actual honeycomb material. So yeah, that's what it looks like. You also did notice a significant amount of smoke coming off of that. That's why having like a shop vac or some kind of exhaust to get rid of that is a good idea. I did that just to kind of show you what it looks like, but the whole shop just, reeks of burnt wood. So um, yeah, just something to take in mind. And this took about, um, about 10 minutes to cut, just to kind of give you an idea. Engraving is pretty much the same thing as cutting. You're just going a lot slower and you're kind of going line by line. The resolution I have set for this is 0.1 millimeter or 10 lines per millimeter. And so you can set that in both laser gerbil, laser gerbil, um, or light burn. And um, they have a video on the SD card that kind of shows how to do these settings. So I'm just using the um, Copperhead logo because yeah, you know, promote Copperhead, go BattleBots. And so yeah, engraving this, pretty straightforward. This produces a lot less dust, but it does take forever. Um, this Copperhead logo I think is 120 millimeters circular, and it takes about 40 minutes um, with the cut, which was unsuccessful, but yeah, it happens. So um, yeah, just take a look at this, and that's what it looks like for engraving. So here's the finished engraving, and the engraving actually turned out really nice. I just used some compressed air to blow it off. Probably could have gone a little bit darker. I think this was like 50 or 60%. MDF doesn't always cut well. You could see it almost made it through after two passes in a couple places, but once again, you kind of need that air assist to clear out the gunk in the inside of that channel, or else the kerf just kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but yeah, maybe with some setting changes and some more time, I could probably figure out a good way to cut through this, but the engraving looks really, really nice. So there you go. Those are my thoughts and opinions on the Creality Falcon 10 watt. It is pretty basic, no frills, no real additional features. I would really like to see the um, focus on the laser head be a little bit better. I might go in there and kind of file it down, sand it down so it's just a little bit smoother because it is a little bit rough and focusing with it is kind of annoying. I really wish they would just throw a stepper motor on there and give you a Z-axis adjustment. That would be nice. But other than that, I mean, it does work. Most of what you're gonna be doing is gonna be pretty much the same focus, especially if you're doing a lot of batch type things. So it's really not that big of a deal and it's not that fiddly. It's just a little bit rough and it could be smoothed a little bit. 
But other than that, um, the 10 watt laser is really the thing that you're buying this for. The X and Y movement and the controller, it's 2022, that's a solved problem. With 3D printers being as popular as they are, it's really easy to get very good, precise X, Y motion out of an inexpensive machine like this. So that's, you know, that's gonna happen and that's easy and most of them have that. There are other options out there like the Ortur Laser Master, um, just off the top of my head, but it is a little bit more expensive, but you do get a little bit more features. So if you're kind of a little bit more um, price sensitive and want something that's just bare bones that just gets the job done, this will do the exact same job as some of the more expensive ones. You just don't get those bells and whistles and user experience or quality of life features that some of the other ones have. So. From my research, this was pretty much the cheapest 10 watt on the market right now, and that kind of aligns with uh, Creality's product design philosophy. So, as always, hopefully you got something out of this. There is an affiliate link down below. You don't have to use it. You don't have to do anything. I don't care. You don't even have to watch this video. Um, but if you do want to use that link, go ahead, use it. it gives me like a few pennies or something like that. So. Uh, thanks for watching, and um, I'm going to redo this for the thumbnail, so if you see like a better version of this in the thumbnail, that's because I'm going to redo it, but that thing takes like 40 minutes, so anyway, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.